Welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us here today. So happy to have you here and be painting for you. Thank you so much. Um, let's see, I have just a couple things before we get started. Um, congratulations to everyone that is in the latest um, pastel journal, the Pastel 100, and including, ta-da, um, one of my former students, Allie Goss. So she won first place in the still life and floral category. So that's so amazing. Congratulations, Allie. So happy for you. And so many other beautiful artworks. So if you get Pastel Journal or if you can view it online, um, take a look. It's really, really, really inspiring. And I'm also in it because I was had the honor of being a juror for the wildlife category this year. So there's a little piece about me in there too. So that's kind of nice. Yeah, so check it out. And let's see what else have I have going on here today. I have been working on some fun little thumbnail sketches and um, starting out, let's, let's go here, starting out with these little squares, getting smaller and smaller, faster and faster, really, really fun drawing practice. And then even down here, so all the way down to little postage stamp, little um, sketches, pencil sketches. So we're, we're really focusing in on the strong design. So super good practice. I'm going to be doing lots, lots more of this. It's really, really fun. Um, let's see. What else? What else? I um, got sent some new pastels from a company, J. Luda Pastels. They sent me their set of 12 darks. So I thought it would be really fun today to use these in the piece that I have uh, planned for you today. So they look really yummy and beautiful. Those along with these uh, um, blue earth ones that I purchased, um, check these out. So those are some really beautiful dark pastels. And then that of course with Terry's up here. So now I think I'm all set on the darks. Uh, and just uh, by way of announcements, we have one spot left in the Tony Elaine workshop, which is coming up May 7th through 9th here in Milwaukee, Oregon. I'm hosting it for him, but Tony is going to be the teacher. Uh, but we will have a little meet and greet here at my place um, the night before the workshop. So if you are able to come into town and join us for that one evening early. That'd be so fun. Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing Tony again here in Milwaukee. Um, it's going to be great. Um, we had, it was full, um, but we had one person drop out um, for extenuating circumstances. So we have one spot. So head over to paintinglessonswithmarla.com and um, there is a sales page for Tony's workshop and you can grab that very last seat in his workshop. Tony is an amazing, amazing guy, amazing artist, amazing instructor, um, and it's going to be just so fun. All right. And, oh, I, want, I don't want to put those over there. I want to put these over here. So today I'm going to be painting this really interesting night scene for you, street scene. And as usual, when I'm painting for you, I really love just to be kind of vulnerable not to really know what to expect. If I always are knowing what to expect, painting just becomes this kind of predictable, boring thing. So I don't know, you know, I, I always try to go into a painting um, without, you know, great expectations and always finding my way. I have a, a, a bit of a process that I put in place for myself, but always open to changing that up, switching that up, and finding new pathways into a painting. So we'll see what happens today. Um, hoping it's not a 100% predictable path. I am starting out in, in, a, in a fairly usual manner for me. I'm going to use the pastel mat. It's dark blue, which seems to make sense for this particular scene. I think keys to this, like, what am I attracted to? Uh, to about this reference photo. I think it's the those those you know bright colored lights, just the this that sort of 
it's not quite evening and it's it's you know twilight so just just the lights just popping on at this time of night uh i think the big shape of the tree on the right and the sort of wispy it's it's it must be it must be fall or winter where there there isn't a lot of foliage on the trees so it's got the kind of neat tracery feeling to them so i think that that's really attractive also interesting the the sort of kind of sinewy pattern on the pavement from i don't know whether that's where they've you know fixed the pavement it's kind of shiny the the surface of the pavement is a bit different there in the foreground and that, that that's that's also sort of interesting to me as well as the sweep of the electrical lines it's very um there's something about those that's very attractive too so try to get some of those things that that seem like that they're holding my interest you know, i'm always trying to figure out what what it is that's holding me in in visually in a scene and i definitely want to get some of those things in it translate those over into a painting however that happens you know sometimes i'm not sure you know how how to go about that but um that's one of the goals so um that with all that being said um i think without further ado i'll get painting um again thank you for being here and joining us so always appreciate it it's fun um, we're still kind of in the in the grip of not winter. We have signs of spring, but it's been pretty cold here. So we're looking forward to some warmer weather coming up. What is that? Oh, nothing. I'm going to straighten okay. up the camera. Oh. Hey, um, can you talk a little bit about cleaning your pastels? Yeah. Um, cleaning pastels. So these days, uh, I, I try to keep them clean as I'm working. I try to, um, I try to uh, wipe them off with just with a tissue. I have I have a little box of tissues right here. So when after I've done a piece when I got a, a pile of pastels, I try to wipe them off as I'm putting them back. And for a number of reasons, I do keep my tray, you know, pretty organized. I, for for myself personally, I think it helps me. Um, I think I'm a better painter for a little organization. Um, you know, I know there are artists like Andrew McDermott says that he just keeps it all in a messy jumble, and they're all kind of gray, like they've been rolling around in his hands. And he said something. He said, "Well." it makes me look, it makes him have to dig a little deeper into his choices, which I think is kind of genius and very interesting, right? For me, I don't trust myself that much. Um, I have my pastels organized via my understanding of color theory view. Um, so it's by hue, value, and saturation. So I try to keep it clean. Now, if they get too dirty being on the, the tray here i so this whole operation is on wheels and so i'll just roll the whole operation outside put a mask on and i get a feather duster and i clean off the whole thing and i'll do that every every once in a while um i very very seldom if ever take a bunch and put them in cornmeal or rice or anything like that. I don't do that any longer. Just don't, I just don't do it. So um, that's what I do. So, yeah. Okay. My intention is for, to make this a square or, or close to a square. Um, I just like the square. Um, I think it is a, um, it has a tension to it that a rectangle doesn't have. And I appreciate that sort of tension um, in 
the piece. So let's see, I'm going to make it 11 by 11. This bounding box is also helping create a certain dynamic tension in a painting and is the basically the container of the painting. So here's my picture plane. Um, I think that that's an important aspect because when when I'm looking at something like this, I'm thinking about what is the dynamic tension between this space and this space that I want to create? And do I want a little more? And then I can judge from this to where this is in a piece. Uh, so having uh, this rather than the edge of the paper, it's easier for me to see. I think critical in this painting, do, do I want more road or do I want more sky? And I want to make a decision because right now there, you know, in this there's more sky. But I'm kind of more interested in this section of the painting than I am the sky. So, um, you know, I, 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 and I want there to be an unequal division. So I'm going to actually raise the, the, um, this point up a little bit. So that's, that feels like the key point. It's the area my eye kind of goes right to. And so I want to identify what is, where am I, where's my eye traveling and the key point of the piece. That's my, my, what I'm trying to figure out. And then, um, and I want it off center like this. So, um, it's this, and if that's the case, then my, all my, my little cars that are sitting in here, this is here, this is the truck behind and it's dark and the ve these vehicles are just rectangles they're just rectangles shapes if I think car then I get all uh, sort of hung up and I don't want to get hung up I want it and I want it to be easy so I'm not thinking I'm thinking what are the shapes and that's it And so that's pretty good for that. And then I'm going to come over from there. Where's this other truck? I come here. This other truck is sitting up a little bit. And I want to make sure that's where I want that truck. Not sure that it is. But I'll just kind of block it in here for now. And, and then I think about this, this guy. And then this guy and these buildings. And this, and then from here, the, this dark shape of the, there's a kind of a distant foliage area. This is sort of like that. I could, in fact, just start right in with the color and the lights um, rather than doing any kind of sketch. But I think it's kind of good to get oriented. And then my road, so then my road is kind of doing something like that. That's pretty good. So it's actually pretty simple. Um, maybe I want a little bit more down here. So I'm, I think I do. This bounding box always also gives me that wiggle room. 
um, and I want uh, I want that. So that's good. Okay, I like it. Um, now from here, I want to go ahead and start getting in some of those brights. And if I look at those, um, I'm kind of thinking that um, I'm going to just go for it a little bit. And just to remind everybody, that was a spruce blue that you used, correct? It was, but I could have just as well used, um, I could have just as well used charcoal. Honestly, I have over the years, you know, used the blue spruce, uh, uh, kind of crutch like <laughs> but I now I'm realizing I didn't need to all this time we I think it's so easy to get into these habits we think we we need to stick with we don't so this is all bad in here. And I'm going to switch to a little more it's pretty good. Um, the road it's kind of gray but I'm going to give it a little more Purple, I think. I could. I haven't. I I need to open up these pastels that I've <laughs> kind of. I. I want to use them. Give up. Give these a try. Um. Feels very luxurious. These look good. I have never used these before. Oh, that's pretty nice. They have they definitely have a little bit of a different feel. This is blue earth. Oh, that's nice. And then over here it gets kind of be to be like this uh, gray mix of, and then Okay, and then I'm gonna get um, this is black. This is a black, or it's you know it's funny with pastel that it some of the blacks aren't as black as charcoal. This feels more brown, but it's supposedly a black. <clears throat> so uh, Marla, mm -hmm. Kath asked asked earlier about the class that you were planning to take. Oh. A couple of weeks ago, you mentioned that you were going to take a class. Yeah. How did that go? Um, I'm still doing it. I had, yeah. So um, stay tuned. So even you take online education? I do. Um, so this, let's see if I can, I want something really dark. This is black. I'm looking at that car, the 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 white car. It can't be white because it's in 
kind of shadow there. So I don't want it, don't want to put it in white. Or about like that for now. And then the, these structures, that's probably a little too light. So you can see how really abstract this is. But it's you, it's also sort of reading pretty well already. Let's get the this in. It's all about these big abstract shapes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get the, the sky in. So I'm always trying to um, establish the painting as a whole, as a unity, as soon as I can, as fast as I can. Um, So the sort of nuances, more nuanced shifts of color and value kind of come later. So I just want to first start like that's already kind of got what I need. And then, you know, once I have that, I can start to respond to the painting. I don't have to necessarily be with the reference as much. I may take some information from the reference. Um, I may take a lot of information from the reference. It just depends. See where am I here? Oh, this this actually feels like it's a little lower. What? I'm having fun. It's nice. Okay, I'll get the other area of the sky going. It's a little bit lighter. Let's see. What? 
I'm looking for a blue that's kind of in the middle, not too light, lighter than the, this is this is the cloud area. So I want something lighter, but not too light. Um, let's see. With this, I'll start here. Whoop. I heard the camera go off. Okay. I always think to myself, well, that doesn't suck. <laughs> that's terrible to say, but that's kind of what I think about when I'm painting. Like, okay, I need to, like, is, is, is how good is it? How, how much is it doing? Is it, is it bad? Um, now, from here, we can play around with some light lights. Um, really want to get this, all the, those bright lights concentrated down in here. It feels like that's where the, all the energy and the action is, is right there. Then we've got the kind of these guys up in here. So maybe I'll get. This one's down a little bit. And there's right under to the right, there's, there's this. Um, and then there's and I don't really have to worry about it being a car or anything. It's not really like that. Just no. These little And you first have to see it as these abstract shapes until you can see it like that. It's really pretty hard to paint it. I 
thinking about these. I want something about these uh, in the road here. I'll come back to that. Along here, there's a sort of series of reflections and lights. And I think I have this one little car kind of on the little bit and wrong spot, but that's all right. I'm going to get these. It's kind of cool. All right. Get that more concentrated. And there's a couple things that are I feel like they're lighter. And there's also I'll kind of leave those at that for now. And I'm going to get these holes in a little more.
I want a little more glow on those lights. Let's see if I can get it. more on these. Are you going to put this one up on Etsy? Um, I I can if somebody. Well, I was that it. was my question because I was just curious. It's going oh. along quite nice. So it's not, usually, I hold my um my opinion. Right. <laughs> Maybe I'll buy it. No. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> it's kind of turning out neat. Um, I like how this car turn is is sitting there. It's pretty cool. Um, This is one, you know, right now, um, I, I like it. I, I don't want to go too far. It feels really um, nice and abstract and kind of fresh. So it would, I would, going to be hesitant to, to take it much further. But I want to get some of these lines in. There's so many. I don't I don't need them all. I just need the the idea of them in there. I don't even need to complete them all the way across. I wouldn't want to do that. You know, I, the, there's atmosphere between the viewer and these lines that's implied by them being a little broken. So I want definitely want that.
Do you use a um, hard pastel for um, phone lines and power lines and stuff? Yeah, it's harder. It, and I'm also, what's cool about these square sticks is that they've got these really nice sharp edges on them. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just doing this. I'm just kind of stamping. You know, just that's it. That's all these are. It's like coming along like this. And and that's good. Oh, it looks pretty good on <laughs> camera. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm painting um, for you guys, I, the, the it's I'm looking at the, we have a monitor where I can see what's, being streamed out and so I can see how the painting looks from that perspective. It's looking pretty good. Um, I think I'm going to leave it. I like the looseness of it. Because I'm asking myself, is there more I need to say? Do I, you know, do I need to say more? Um, is saying more going to add or detract? I think at this point, saying more is definitely going to detract. So it's 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 like a little you know, sort of haiku of the reference photo in a in a way. That's what I want. Um, I always think about when I'm painting. I want to paint poems, not novels, and a haiku would be the best. <laughs> And so when I can sort of get that, um, that's great. Um, is it finished? So, you know, that being said, is it finished? Could I, yeah, can some, is a little polish needed maybe? But what does that mean? Polish, does that mean getting in there and rendering that, rendering things? Or does it mean just like just tweaking and adjusting a couple of shapes and the relationships between shapes? Maybe. And, um, but it, it doesn't mean getting in here and getting the, the car more, you know, anything. It doesn't mean defining things anymore like this. So we're about right, right here. But, so yeah, I like it. One one thing I would I would like this car to be sitting on the road a little bit more. So maybe that's one, you know, one or two little lines, something like that. But yeah. All right, guys. I think that's it for today. Remember that there's one spot in the Tony Elaine workshop, May 7th through 9th, here in Milwaukee, Oregon. Um, we're going to have a great time. Um, and it's a lovely um, opportunity to spend time with Tony. And uh, I'm hosting. I'm not teaching. It's all it's all all Tony all the time. So. Uh, but I'll be hanging, hanging around here and there, helping out. All right. Um, thanks for joining us today. As always, I really, really appreciate you um, tuning in, so to speak, to watch. And we'll be coming back at you with another live stream real soon. Not, not exactly sure uh, when. We're, we're busy with some projects right now, so we're not doing one every single week. But um, as, off, as frequently as we possibly can, we'll be back at you with a demonstration. Okay, thanks. Have a great weekend.